Hello and welcome to another Make Science Easy Biology lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be having a look at enzymes. We're going to find out what enzymes are, how they work, and why they are so important. So, what are enzymes? Well, in order to understand what enzymes are, we first need to understand that within any living organism, there are a large number of chemical reactions constantly taking place. These chemical reactions help to keep an organism alive. So without these chemical reactions, life is not possible. Organisms can only live because of chemical reactions taking place within them. And generally, chemical reactions occur very, very slowly in living things under normal conditions. But all organisms produce special chemicals called enzymes, and enzymes help to speed up chemical reactions. Enzymes are what we call biological catalysts. Now, a catalyst is a chemical that will speed up a reaction without actually being involved in that reaction or changed by that reaction. So an enzyme is a biological catalyst. So biological means it's made by living things. So a biological catalyst is a catalyst made by an organism to help speed up those reactions within the organism. And enzymes are very specific. There is not just one enzyme that speeds up every reaction. Every reaction has its own enzyme that helps to speed it up. So we can think about this idea that enzymes are specific. Enzymes work like a lock and a key. If we have a door and we have lots and lots of keys, only one key is going to be able to open a specific door. Having multiple keys means we can open multiple doors, but only one key will work on each door. Now this is because in incredibly simple terms, a key can only open a door when it actually fits into the lock. Now this is incredibly similar to how enzymes actually work. It's also worth noting that some keys might fit in a lock, but not fit perfectly, so they can't actually open the door. So when we think about enzymes, we think about a lock and a key mechanism. So here we have a picture of a simplified model of an enzyme. And we have something called the active site of the enzyme. The active site of an enzyme is the part of the enzyme where the reaction takes place. And we've got three different substrates. Substrates are chemicals that are either broken apart by an enzyme or put together by an enzyme. So we have a red, a yellow, and a green substrate. Now the red substrate does not fit into the active site of the enzyme, so no reaction can take place. The yellow substrate does not fit into the active site of the enzyme, so no reaction can take place. The green substrate, on the other hand, does fit into the active site of the enzyme, so it's possible that this enzyme will be able to act on this green substrate. So it works as a lock and key mechanism. The substrate, the chemical involved in the reaction, needs to be able to fit into the active site of the enzyme. And as I've already said, the active site is where the reaction actually happens. So here we have another example to show how this works. We have our enzyme with its active site, and we have a substrate. Now our substrate can fit into the enzyme and fit into the active site, so the lock and key mechanism will work. And in this particular example, the enzyme breaks apart the substrate into two new substances. So some enzymes break substances apart. But it is possible for the opposite to happen. As well as an enzyme breaking a substrate apart, an enzyme can join substrates together. So these two parts of the substrate fit into the enzyme's active site. And once both substrates have entered the active site, the enzyme can act and can join the two substrates together. So we can see that enzymes both join substances together and break them apart. Well, 
We've already explained this, but let's just make it really clear. What do enzymes do? Well, enzymes can join small molecules together to make larger ones, or they can break larger molecules together into smaller ones. Both of these processes are essential for life. And enzymes are required for almost every single reaction that occurs in the body. So let's have a look here at a way an enzyme might work again. We have a very, very long chained molecule. These are our blue dots joined together. This could be, for example, a starch molecule. And the red semicircles with an active site are our enzyme. And we can see that the enzyme will join together with the substrate and it will act on them. And once the enzyme has finished acting, the long chain molecule is broken down into shorter chain molecules. This is exactly how an enzyme works. It breaks apart long chain molecules into shorter chain ones. So this is gonna be the exact opposite process here. The enzymes act, and as they act, they join the molecules together, and we end up with a long chain molecules. So enzymes break apart or join together molecules in the body. Now enzymes are greatly affected by temperature. And we can see here we have a graph showing the rate of reaction that occurs at different temperatures with an enzyme. We can see at zero degrees Celsius, virtually no reaction takes place. At about 37 degrees Celsius, the rate of reaction is fastest. What's important about 37 degrees Celsius? Well, it's human body temperature. And above 37 degrees Celsius, the reaction becomes much slower. And at about 45 degrees Celsius, the reaction stops altogether. So, enzymes work very slowly at low temperatures. And enzymes work best at around 37 degrees Celsius. And enzymes stop working above 40 degrees Celsius. Now the reason why enzymes work slowly at such low temperatures is because the particles are moving very, very slowly. And when particles move slowly, they are unlikely to collide with each other. In order for a chemical reaction to take place, particles must collide. Now this is something I'm going to be covering in a lot more detail in the chemistry course. So if you haven't yet signed up for the chemistry course, it might be a really good idea because there is lots of overlap between biology and chemistry. As the temperatures increase, particles move faster and are more likely to collide. If particles collide, a reaction can take place. Now you might think, well hang on a minute, why does the reaction not continue to get faster above 40 degrees? So, why do enzymes stop working above 40 degrees? Well, it's really important to notice that enzymes are made out of protein. So all enzymes are made out of protein. And a really good example of something made out of protein would be an egg white. Now you've all seen what happens to an egg white when you heat it. It goes from colorless and liquidy to white and solid. So when proteins are heated, their structure will change. Now this process is irreversible. We cannot uncook an egg, for example. So when we heat an enzyme, the changes to its shape are permanent. Let's remember, our enzymes work because of their active site fitting the substrate perfectly, the lock and key mechanism. Well, what happens if the shape of that active site changes? What happens if you take your key and you melt it in a really hot flame? Will your key work anymore? No, it won't it will not fit into the lock anymore. So if our enzyme is heated, it changes shape and it can no longer work because the substrates no longer fit into the active site. So our active site in this example has changed. Our substrate can no longer fit inside of it. So the enzyme cannot act on the substrate at all. So, the name of the process that occurs when an enzyme heats up and changes shape and can no longer work is called denaturing. So, in summary, enzymes are biological catalysts that allow reactions to occur in all living things. Enzymes can either break substrates apart or join them together. Enzymes are specific 
and each enzyme will only work on one substrate. Enzymes work fastest at around 40 degrees Celsius body temperature. And enzymes are made of protein. If they get too warm, they denature, they change shape. They will not work because the substrate cannot fit into them. Now, we're going to be covering a lot more on enzymes when we do the lessons on digestion. Because there are lots of enzymes involved in the digestive system. So we're really going to look at this in more detail in later lessons. But for now, I hope you know what an enzyme is. I hope you know how they work and the conditions that they work best in and what denaturing is. Until next lesson, keep on learning.